Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and let's talk about Doctor Who. More specifically, Season 11, Episode 4, Arachnids in the UK. Now if you've not yet seen Episode 4, what are you doing on this video? Because we are definitely going to be talking about spoilers. So click away from this video, go watch the episode, and then come back to this video and let's talk about things. First off, dramatic time vortex redesign. I kinda really like it, but we'll talk more about that later. The Doctor manages to successfully get her trio back to Sheffield, but strange webbing is appearing everywhere. And no, even though some of the shots and even the dialogue sort of hinted towards uh, Spider-Man appearing, it's just that there was a disruption with the spider ecosystem. Seriously, when they were in the lab talking about enhancing spiders, I thought, Spider abilities. There's gonna be a Spider-Man in the Doctor Who universe. Now that is someone I would love to see as a companion. Now this is not the first time that Doctor Who has tackled spiders or even the second, and I'm pretty sure it's not even the third time, but Chibnall said that this season was going to go back to the basics and a fear of spiders is definitely a basic fear. The Doctor says her goodbyes, sort of laying it on pretty thick with the whole parting of their ways thing, just <sighs> looking sheepishly all over the place like, oh, I guess, I guess this is goodbye. I really, uh, I really don't want to go. But then they go back to Yaz's for tea and we get to learn a little bit more about Yaz's family. It's not a lot, but we find out what she misses, what she just cannot stand being around, the dynamics between the family members, and she ultimately decides to go traveling with the doctor. Now on to the meat of the plot of the episode, we get the cliche, rich, non-caring antagonist. The negligent multi-billion dollar business owner that just goes around mutating spider carcasses. You know, that old chestnut. Turns out gun-toting Jack Robertson hates Trump and wants to run against him in the 2020 presidential election. The role of Robertson was definitely hammed up to a near eccentric degree, but somehow it sort of worked. But the one thing that didn't happen to Mr. Big was by the end of the episode, there was no real penalty. Usually when someone in the show goes against the doctor's wishes, they are then taught a lesson. But Mr. Big comes out, bullets flying, the main spider is killed, and then he just walks away after a big speech from the doctor about how guns are bad and about how you shouldn't use guns and how she was already dying and you shouldn't have to kill the spider and it's just this whole big thing. And then he just leaves. But does this mean that he might show up at some point in the future? Could the TARDIS land in 2020 or 2021 and we will see President Mr. Big? I mean, sorry, President uh, Robertson? He is a powerful man with an equally powerful ego who has butted heads with the doctor and then left completely unscathed. So could we see him at some point in the future? Ryan apparently got a letter from his estranged father, but do you honestly think his recanting of the letter was true? because I don't. The line about him being sorry for not being there, about wanting to reconnect, that just, that doesn't sit well with me. I feel like someone other than Ryan's father might have written the letter in order to get Ryan under some false sense of security, or it was just some other letter about some other thing, and Ryan was making it seem like his father was sort of sorry for the things that he's done, but I don't think he is. And yeah, there was that bit about proper family, but I think that was just Ryan's way of telling Graham that he is Ryan's proper family. One of two things, either Ryan's father did not write the letter or Ryan's father is not sorry. I don't think that Ryan was being truthful about the letter. And if he was, it wasn't Ryan's father who wrote it. Throughout the episode, Graham kept seeing Grace, which was a great visual for his grief. And that grief ultimately made him decide to travel with the doctor. You know, I realize I'm not really talking about the spiders in the episode, but that's because they, they weren't really villains. About a half an hour into the episode, all the dots started to become connected and there was no real huge reveal, no villainous plot, just negligence, ego, and spiders that never asked to mutate. But the episode itself was meant to be a vehicle to solidify Team TARDIS. And the episode sort of had a very Russell T. Davies feel to it, at least to me. Maybe it was the heavy use of CGI, maybe it was having no real diabolical villain plot, I don't know, it just, it, ha it had that vibe. In the end of the episode, all three of our trio decide to go along with the Doctor. Surprise, surprise, we never saw that coming. But as they were entering the TARDIS, Graham had one of those, 
I might not actually make it back from this sort of looks. Go back and watch the episode because he definitely has one of those like, I might die out here. The doctor tells them you're not gonna come back as the same people who left here. And that is heavy. 13 is putting companionship in a perspective that no previous recent new who doctor actually has. Most of the time the doctor has to convince his new friends to come along as a companion, but here she is telling him, uh, I can't protect you. This is, you, you're deciding to come along with me. That's cool and all, but just here are the stakes. Because yeah, companions learn and grow and definitely become more independent over time. But sometimes they die, which can be an unfortunate side effect of standing too close to the doctor. Oh, it was the psychic paper. The psychic paper is what makes it feel like a Russell T. Davies episode because Russell T. Davies actually came up with the psychic paper in order to streamline the doctor's authority. Come to think of it, the psychic paper is the first time that 13 has used an old item from a previous regeneration, isn't it? Okay, now Chris Chibnall said months ago that season 11 was going to have an overarching plot, but arachnids in the UK had no mention of the timeless child, the Stenza hunting people, content tests, none of that. So what is this season's overarching plot? I was going to mention this in Rosa because there wasn't anything in that episode connecting it to the first two. But I thought maybe if I ruminated on that episode a little more, maybe gave it another watch, something would fall into place, but I, I got nothing. So my question to you is what do you think the overarching plot of season 11 is going to be? Will Tim Shaw return as the big bad of season 11 or is there somebody up top orchestrating human hunting and spider webbing? Let me know your thoughts. Also I'm aware I need to take care of this very soon and also this because I'm looking a little desert islandy. And I dropped the ball last week but I promise that this week I'm going to be posting another video before Saturday. Probably two, maybe three. Maybe. Three. Maybe. But as always, my name is Travis. Thank you for listening to what I have to say, and you will see me soon.